We now turn to a uh, discussion of hydraulic turbines. And uh, the first uh, hydraulic turbine that we uh, look at is uh, the uh, Francis turbine, uh, which is a reaction turbine. The Francis turbine, as can be seen here, is uh, usually oriented with its axis vertically upwards. Uh, water from the penstock enters the volute casing, which is uh, seen here, the cross section view of which is uh, shown here. So the water at high pressure uh, from the penstock enters the uh, volute casing and it then flows through this runner, which is shown in red, uh, from a larger radius to a smaller radius. And the water then leaves axially through this uh, draft tube. A close-up view of the Francis turbine runner is uh, shown here. Uh, it can be seen that this is the uh, entry uh, to the runner and this is the exit. So the water enters radially, it's a radially invert flow turbine and exits uh, in this direction axially. Uh, these are usually massive runners and are capable of uh, producing uh, large amounts of uh, power. So they are used uh, under medium head and medium discharge conditions. And the runner, as we have already said, is uh, radially inward flow type. The pressure in the scroll casing, uh, where the water enters from the penstock, is uh, the hydrostatic pressure due to the entire head from the reservoir level up to the, da up to the turbine level. And the pressure decreases as the fluid flows through the runner and exits. Now, uh, Francis turbine runners are designed usually in such a way as to uh, cause a decrease in pressure due to both the terms in this equation. Notice that dp is zero, uh, not only because dr is negative, because it's a radial inflow turbine, but also because dc is positive. So the rotor is designed in such a way that the dc is also positive so that this also contributes uh, in a negative fashion to this equation so the pressure decreases along the streamline due to a combination of both these terms the advantage of uh, both these terms contributing to the pressure change is that uh, the rotor becomes very very compact and the uh, rotational speed can also be kept uh, as low as possible which actually reduces the centrifugal stress on the uh, rotor blades and other parts of the rotor. Uh, since the pressure changes in the runner from the uh, high value at the scroll casing to uh, discharge pressure, which is uh, much lower, it must always run full and the casing on the scroll and other, uh, and, uh, other parts of the casing has to be sufficiently thick to withstand the hydrostatic stress. And as we have already mentioned, the Francis turbine is categorized as a reaction turbine on account of the fact that the pressure changes through the runner. Here is a, a view of the blade element uh, of the rotor. So you can see the blade element here. So the flow enters uh, at a higher radius, flows along the blade and then leaves at a smaller radius. So this would be uh, characterized as a design operating condition where the uh, uh, relative velocity at entry is tangential to the blade and the velocity here is also tangential to the blade. Now the uh, power produced by the turbine is usually controlled by uh, changing the flow rate through the turbine. Since the power, hydraulic power is uh, rho times Q times G times H, by regulating Q, the power produced by the turbine may be regulated. But the disadvantage with this strategy is that when Q is changed, the absolute velocity uh, approaching the runner changes uh, magnitude and hence direction. Uh, I'm sorry, it changes magnitude. And so the uh, relative velocity vector at entry to the blade will no longer be tangential and they're off design operating conditions. So in order to uh, mitigate this effect, movable guide vanes are provided upstream of the runner so that when the uh, absolute velocity at entry decreases, these guide vanes change the inlet flow angle alpha one in such a way that the relative velocity vector is always uh, tangential at entry to the plate. So this eliminates shock losses at off design operating condition. And uh, this uh, guide vane uh, ensures that C1 is tangential to the rotor blade at any flow rate. In fact, uh, we can actually see the guide vanes here. So the guide vanes are shown in green here. They are located uh, between the casing 
and the pointer of entry of the runner and they serve and they're movable uh, through this mechanism in green that is shown here and they serve to uh, ensure a tangential entry uh, into the runner at any fluid at a close-up view or a different view of the uh, guide veins may be uh, seen here so the yellow blades of the uh, guide veins and they are connected to this mechanism to the hydraulic piston here and they are uh, they can be rotated uh, depending upon the flow rate to always ensure a tangential entry into the runner at any flow rate so uh, what we will do next is to uh, record an example involving a francis turbine so the problem statement reads like this a Francis turbine operates with a discharge of 4.5 meter cube per second, head of 150 meters of water and a rotational speed of 450 RPM. The inlet radius R1 is 0 0.6 meters and the water enters the rotor at an angle of uh, 72 degrees plus 72 degrees. The exit radius R2 is equal to 0 0.48 meters and the water leaves the rotor without swirl. Determine the power generator, uh, the blade angle beta 1, and beta 2. Okay. So at the inlet, the blade speed may be evaluated as uh, uh, a 2 pi n uh, times r1 divided by 60. And if we substitute the numbers, uh, this comes out to be 28.27 meter per second. So if we neglect any loss in the, um, uh, in the pen stock, then uh, the velocity, absolute velocity V1 at entry to the uh, guide wing or the runner may be evaluated as square root of 2GH, which comes out to be 54.25 meter per second. Now at the inlet, uh, we know that the tangential component V theta 1 is V1 times sine alpha 1. And that if we substitute the numbers uh, with alpha equal to 72, we get this to be 50.69 meter per second. And at the outlet, V theta, v theta 2 is zero, since it is a given that the water leaves the rotor without swirl. Therefore, the power P may be evaluated from the Euler turbine equation uh, as rho times two times V theta one times U one, which uh, comes out to be 6,448 kilowatts. At the inlet, uh, we may write the uh, radial velocity VR1 as V1 times cosine alpha 1, which uh, gives VR1 as 16.764 meter per second, which is the same as CR1. Since V theta 1, which is uh, 50.69, is uh, greater than U1, which is 28.27, uh, we may write C theta 1 as V theta 1 minus U1, uh, which gives C theta 1 as 23.32 meter per second. Uh, we have already made the observation that beta 1 is going to be positive. So, looking uh, at this velocity triangle, the relative velocity vector is uh, in a counterclockwise direction from the reference direction. So, we expect beta 1 to be uh, greater than 0. Uh, so, with the given values of or with the calculated values of CR1 and C theta 1, you may evaluate beta 1 as arc tangent of C theta 1 divided by CR1, which gives us 54.29 degrees. Uh, furthermore, the runner height at inlet may also be evaluated by uh, or from the given flow rate. Notice that at the inlet, uh, the flow rate Q into the runner may be written as uh, 2 pi r, where r is the uh, 2 pi r1 times the height of the runner, which is B, times the uh, radial velocity at the inlet. So Q is equal to 2 pi R1 times B times V R1, from which we can calculate B as 0 0.0712 meters. At the outlet, the radial velocity may be evaluated as Q divided by 2 pi R2 times B. And if we substitute the known values, we get the, the velocity to be 5.24 meter per second. And this is the same as uh, CR2. Since V theta 2 equal to 0, C theta 2 uh, is equal to U2, uh, which may be evaluated to be 22.62 meter per second. And as we have already noted from the velocity triangle, uh, we expect the angle beta 2 to be negative because uh, the relative velocity vector is in a clockwise direction from the reference direction. So, 
knowing the values of CR2 and C theta2, we may evaluate beta2 as R tangent C theta2 divided by uh, CR2, which gives beta2 to be minus 77 degrees.